Hey fellow IS542ers, Brooke here. For my tech presentation and demo, I've chosen to showcase Google Analytics. As y'all are probably well aware, Google Analytics is a SaaS or software as a service provided by Google that tracks and records website traffic to provide insights about your site and your site's visitors. This service is integrated into a site through JavaScript. In relation to a website, have you ever pondered the questions, where you come from, why you're here, and where you're going? Those are the questions Google Analytics sets out to answer. But before we get too deep, I want to answer, why is Google Analytics an important aspect of web development? It's important because once your page loads, users form an opinion in 0.05 seconds. That is not long at all. And once they're there, you'll only have about 10 seconds to make an impression and tell them what they'll get out of your website and company, or they'll leave. Therefore, the more we understand about our users, the better impression we'll be able to make. For the remainder of this presentation, I'll talk through the background of Google Analytics, the service offering it provides, the pros and cons of that service offering, and then demo from account creation to customizing certain features. In 1995, Urchin started to take off as a web statistics analysis program. It was developed by Urchin Software Corporation and analyzed web server logs that then displayed traffic information based on the data analyzed. In 2004, Google approached Urchin and worked out an offer to acquire their company. Within the first week of launching Google Analytics in 2005, their service gained 100,000 new accounts. Fast forward to 2018 and Google Analytics is being used on almost 28 million live sites. By default, Google Analytics collects the following information, such as time of visit, page visited, and time spent on each page. It also collects information such as web browser and type of operating system of our visitor. And it even includes geographic information such as network location or IP address. We'll dive into these more when we take a look at the Google Analytics dashboards during the demo. As you can see, there are several benefits with using Google Analytics. In addition to some of the features we reviewed in the service offering, Google Analytics also enables the user to create custom reports. There's two other important features I'd like to highlight from the capabilities list. The first is the capability to integrate with other tools. This is an important feature when we'll discuss the cons. Another capability I'd like to highlight is tracking campaigns. This feature refers to the method of identifying how users came to access or discover our site. This information is particularly important because utilizing this information can provide insight into which campaign is most effective in generating site referrals, which also helps the company better allocate their marketing resources. And obviously having a product backed by the Google brand and being free for the basic services doesn't hurt either. The main con with Google Analytics is the gap between the information that's gathered and the why behind the data. For example, Google Analytics provides data on which pages of the site have high traffic volume and are the most popular, but it doesn't provide information on why that page is popular. It could be the design or it could be the content. Or on the flip side, if a page has a high exit rate, we have a clue that something about the page could be improved, but what? Again, is it the design or is it something about the page that's just not working right? Or could the visitor have been looking for something else and the site navigation just isn't intuitive? However, this con doesn't impact Google Analytics primary customers too much, as we can see from their 4.5 overall rating. As you can see from the ratings broken down by company size, Google Analytics' largest customer base is small to mid-sized companies who utilize Google Analytics as their primary source of web analytics. And for all the reasons we discussed with the pros, Google Analytics provides great value to these companies. But this doesn't mean that enterprise companies don't take advantage of Google Analytics service offering either. This is primarily because of their ability to integrate with other features. For example, the service Lucky Orange, which could be compared to a camera capturing real-time feed on each page, provides more detailed information on what users touch, what areas of the page are most popular, and so on. And as you can probably guess by now, Lucky Orange can be integrated with Google Analytics. So all things considered, it makes sense why Google Analytics is used on more than 27 million sites. 
And now that we better understand its value, let's create an account. Okay, so here you can see I'm on the analytics.google.com website. And to create a Google Analytics account is basically a matter of five form fields. All you have to do is specify whether you'd like to track a website or mobile app, add an account name, website name, URL, select the industry category, and the reporting time zone, and click Get Tracking ID. For my purpose though, since I already have an account, I am just going to sign in. Once you have an account, similar to when we created our Google Maps API, it will give you a snippet of code, in this case, an asynchronous JavaScript function to insert into your project. And for Google Analytics, they recommend inserting it into the head tag as the first thing in the head tag in the index.html file. Could it really be that simple? Yep, it really is that simple. Going back now to the Google Analytics dashboard, you can see I've attached my account to the Scriptures Map project. Also on this left-hand side of the screen, you can see that there's multiple types of reports. There's real-time, audience, acquisition, behavior, and conversions. Let's start off in this real-time overview report. Right now, you can see that there's two active users, one person on a mobile view and one on tablet. We can also see this page views per minute. Page views refers to the total number of pages people visited on your website. So we can see 21 minutes ago, there was four page views. And just two minutes ago, there was one page view. We can also see where our active users are coming from. So they're coming from Orem. Let's take a look now at this audience report. I'm going to specify the dates in this top right hand corner and compare yesterday's data with today's data. Okay, as we can see, yesterday on Friday we had one user, and today we've had a total of six users. Six of those visitors have been, uh, been new visitors, and we've had one returning visitor. So all in all, we had, have had seven sessions. Sessions refers to the number of times visitors are actively engaged on your website. So generally speaking, every visitor has at least one session, but they could have more depending on the circumstances. We've had a total of 59 page views, and we've had approximately 8.43 pages per session. That number refers to the average number of pages viewed during a session on your website. So the more pages viewed per session means the more the users are engaged in exploring your website. So that's a good sign. This average session duration of 30 minutes is also a good sign because the longer the session, the more the users are engaged. And in our case, it's more likely that someone's actually reading a chapter. The bounce rate is 28.57%. That rate is referring to the percentage of visits that are single page only. So the people who visit one page and then leave. In our case, because like it technically is a single page application, it's not as important, but still something good to be aware of. We can see that all of our users have viewed our website in the English language. So most likely are English speakers as a native language, come from the United States, and all have come from the city of Orem. They have used both Chrome or Safari when viewing our site and have had an operating system of either an iOS phone or a Windows machine. Okay, so all in all, this report gives us a good overview of our audience, some characteristics about what they're using to view our site so that we can tailor our service. We can see how long they're staying, the number of pages they're viewing, how many new visitors we're receiving in a specific time period, etc. We can also save this report, export it, or share it. And exporting is pretty convenient because we have the PDF, Google Sheets, Excel, and CSV options. Let's take a quick look now at this acquisition overview report. This chart specifically breaks down our traffic by its source. And there are four key sources of traffic, direct, organic, referral, and social. Direct, as you can see, makes up 100% of my traffic, which refers to visitors who directly type in my URL into their browser. Organic refers to those who arrive to your website from a search engine, 
referral are visitors who arrive to your website from another website that's linked to you, and social traffic are visitors who arrive to your website from a social media network. So all in all, this type of information can be really vital in targeting your ad campaigns or paying for certain keywords based on where your users are coming from. If we go down now to the behavior reports and click on site content landing pages, we can see what page people are landing on when first getting to our site. In our case, we can obviously see it's our default page, the scripture is mapped, and that is because that's our only option. But this information becomes particularly important when we have a multi-page site and we want to see which page people are landing on first because that is their first interaction with our website and we want it to be a good one. This exit pages is also a key information in our case, again, it's that default page because that's the only option, but this exit page can also give insight into what pages may cause our visitors to leave. Maybe we can target it and see if it's confusing in any way or the design needs to be improved, things like that. We just walked through three default reports available through Google Analytics and we are barely scratching the surface. There's still things that can be tracked such as site speed. And that's not even mentioning all the customization options, such as creating a custom dashboard, custom report, and even custom alerts. In conclusion, I hope the presentation helped you to see how Google Analytics service offering can be utilized in your web development projects going forward. Its valuable insights into your website's audience can help you create better user experiences. And I hope the demo helped you get a good foundation under your feet and understanding a few of the vast options available, as well as recognize opportunities to create customized reports to capture the value of your unique use cases. Thanks for tuning in.